I uh, suppose it's another log report. It's uh, 5.48 in the morning Pacific Standard Time. It's still the 17th of July, 2023. Uh, for a Monday, uh, we were John C. Rosamond, California. What's going on, guys? Okay, so we get into politics. Are we not getting into the grieving situation? Because I already had different things triggering me yesterday. And the day before. Little things, but the rest of the time I was just trying to get through the damn heat. And not trying to think. Well, I'd go through the Facebooks. I'd go through the stuff like that to talk about. And talk about the uh, human element of crying my eyeballs out. i trying to talk to people about the situation. I've come across situations, and I'm trying to stay the hell away from the politics. I mean, that's going to be coming up on another video, I guess, this morning. But right now, I'm trying to get the stuff out, and after that, I'm trying to get this place cleaned up a little bit. Breakfast didn't get it cleaned up. Because I got the bug spring guy coming in about two, a few hours from now. That's going to be fun, isn't it? I talked to you uh, shrink concerning about my personal issues, how I'm doing this morning, or how I'm doing the past couple of weeks. How am I doing the past couple of weeks, or actually the past week, since I spoke with my last therapist on this one? Trying not to stress out as much. Trying not to freak out as much. Emotionally trying to be stable enough. And sleeping my ass off left and right. During the daytime, having my sleep situation screwed up. Again, see all these damn memes and all these stories, and I'm trying to avoid them like the plague this time. Because basically, I'm getting tired of getting drowned and bogged down with all this damn depressional shit and all this grieving crap. I want to learn how to live, damn it. You know, I see other friends of mine going out to different places. They're laughing. They're smiling. They're trying to act like they're having a good time. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Then I look at my own damn miserable existence over here. And I'm thinking, why, not, why haven't I been like that? It sucks. And I have to be dependent upon pills or something like that for my own stability. Shit. That's all I need. I still need to see a primary care physician about my physical condition deteriorating more and more. I'm getting more and more of the neuropathy in the fingers. I'm getting muscle sores I don't even realize in my right by my left kneecap. The feet are still feeling the same. They still tingle, they still hurt. After a while, I barely even pay attention to the damn pain. Blocked it out. But my fingers, yeah, I feel them. Not the pain, it's just... <sighs> I don't know what the hell it is. It's like I'm feeling the constant shooting in the electrical system here shorting out sometimes. And at times, I still have to keep rubbing over a few things just to see if I can still feel it. And it becomes a little painful when I do. So I know the neuropathy is settling into the fingertips. It's slowly working its magic. The body is still fighting off and still asking me why why haven't I been pilled up and medicated and stuff. My pride, my ego, my fear, the medical establishment. Yeah, it is. It is. What scares the hell out of me is I'm going to be dependent upon needles. If the blood sugar is that screwed up at this point over here and my insulin's out of control, then it means I have to go under the pills, actually under the needles, for the insulin shots. I would prefer taking the pills instead. 
I'm not sticking anything into me. I don't care if it's going to be saving my damn life. I'm not sticking a damn needle in my ass or in my skin somewhere. I have been poked and prodded like crazy that I am getting sick and tired of the damn shit. And I don't want to be that way. It doesn't matter what I want. So the doctor's going to be forcing down my throat, and that's the thing I'm also afraid about. That I have to be turned into something that I don't want to be. A damn lab rat. But I turned myself into a damn lab rat, didn't I? By refusing to be turned into a lab rat. I'm looking at the news right now. I got a friend of mine who keeps complaining about certain personal things. Or, I don't know if I call him a friend or not. A fellow YouTuber. I'll just call him a tuber. And he is trying to show a few things he's interested in. Okay, fine. Some of the stuff I actually have a question on. I question uh, a lot of things. I'm questioning about our temperatures, our, how we got here climate-wise, climate, climate wise, political seasons, people with their extremities or extreme viewpoints trying to screw things over left and right, their way or the highway. And you know what I keep noticing on uh, YouTubes when the zeros and ones have already locked me into it? I'm locked in into the Karens. I'm locked into the Karens. Good Lord, I'm dealing with the Karens at this point over here. This person doesn't like it. This person doesn't like it. So let's get them on videotape and expose the living crap out of them that they don't like something. Or it's the extreme nature of the Karen that people get the entertainment value for. How about that one? Oh, yeah, try that one. Am I going to be laughing about this one? I'm just going to be uh, scratching my head literally on this one here. Because Karens. Some people don't like things and they'll be subtle about it and other people will just be blatant about it. And the one thing we're getting the entertainment value is the blatant Karens out there. It doesn't matter if they're male or female. They're still Karens. Where the hell this damn terminology came from? It's like listening to the term of Terminology of woke. I had to go back onto uh, go back into different dictionaries, trying to determine and, and define. It's like the urban dictionaries have a better definition regarding Karens. But there's another aspect of it that we're not even looking at. There is an aspect of it that's dancing. One one thing I want to make mention: if you happen to see anything crawling around. It's a constant bug war I'm still dealing with. I got a uh, bug guy coming over from Oregon again. It's still weekly spring, and I got to get this cabinet swept out and make sure everything's ready for these guys to come in and take a look. Actually, I've invested about a couple hours on that one. But getting back to the other situation here. They're toddler brains from kindergarten and hadn't grown up yet. One particular guy who did a video on this one was trying to trying to figure out how come we lost our minds right after COVID knocked our ass out. Changed our behaviors a great deal. So now we got Karens all around. Oh my God. I hate to tell this person here, but we've already had the Karens out there. They just didn't bother to notice it. They didn't want to notice the damn shit. So here we are. We got the Karens. We got the kindergarten mentality. And I'd seen this spoken out in a clip of the this House of Representatives where they already had the uh, National Defense Act of sorts being passed over with a lot of amendments added to it. But before they were doing that, they were trying to get the diversity equity, equality, investment program out because normally that would help teach 
our military uh, how to learn to live with diversity. Treat each other the same. You're part of the military. You're part of the unit. You gotta deal with the military. You're still part. You're still a human being. So let's deal with them as a human being. And then I hear the. I hear the uh, soft suit. I I hear the. The soft step. We want to get. Politics out of military. So therefore, we're going to be injecting politics into the military. By the same schmuck who keeps talking about it. I'm pounding my head on a ball on this one, figuratively. Trying to figure this behavior out. It's toddler brain. And then I see it being called out, and then the house floor being... I, I need to see what the hell this damn tape was. I mean, I'd like to see somewhere on C-SPAN or even the Washington Post if they were actually were covering this particular meeting ha that happened. And it must have happened last week. It must have happened last week. Because only last week they only talk about things that's going on left and right and oh shit, there goes our damn roaches again. Oh yeah. I got a problem with these bastards. I really do. See him crawling around and then whap. I'll, squ I'll squish him. I just whap him. It's like, get away from me, kid. You're bothering me. And I'm not laughing about the damn thing. I don't want these games he guys here, but they're living here. That's the thing that pisses me off. So basically, on the uh, C-SPAN channels, I'm going to have to start watching more and more of the Congress and how they're trying to misrelate. Uh, I'll say that again, misrelate. And how they're not being treated as Karens or not. Because this one got treated into a Karen situation. On Forbes' news cycle on uh, YouTube, they were talking about this a great deal. And I had to save that one. Because that was just driving me crazy. Forbes breaking news. Yeah. And it would have it days ago. And watching this stuff, it's like I'm watching kindergarten at work. I don't understand it with these guys. But this is Congress. And you know what? This is, this is how it's been for a hell of a long while. This has. I'm trying to find the one where these guys went after each other. And this was like days ago, I think. Here we go. Matt Gates is one of those assholes out there that he's pure, he's pure anti-woke, he's pure Trumpism, he's pure kissing people's ass, and then he's got the Democrats thumping on his ass. Verbally. Trying to tell these people what the hell is going on. Okay, um, just for the record, was in South Carolina. It was Alabama, Tuberville. Let's put this one on the record. I guess this is going to be buried deep, but I got to put this one out. Alabama, Senator Tuberville. He's the one that keeps holding up all the damn bullshit with the with the. Uh, with the Defense Act. He's in the Senate. He wants anything regarding abortion taken out of the military uh, spending bill. And the uh, it's Appropriations Act. This one helps the military to get promotions going and things getting taken care of for the military. Basically, I'll just go water it down that way. But in there was helping out there are supposed to be key provisions, and this is getting attacked by the idiots who don't believe in women's protective rights, or even life, period. But worse than a damn conservative I've ever come across. 
So this is the toddler brain. This is about a 70-year-old toddler, toddler brain who wants things his way. He's holding up military promotions, people trying to get out from one area to another area of the military. They're trying to move around in the military. We're trying to get a, a Marine commandant. And this asshole is saying, no, you, if you're a woman, you don't have any abortion rights. I say so. Marines in the United States government will not pay for this damn stuff. Even though you might be part of the military or you might be military family, it doesn't matter. You're going to be yelled at. You're going to be screamed at. You're going to be controlled. You're going to be told, no, you no longer have it. We're not going to allow the military to do this. How dare you? And I will hold up the military. I mean, he's basically said this already. And also, the guy's a racist as well. Oh, I'm not a racist 110%. Yeah, well, I know I am. It's Pandora's box blasted open at this point over here. We all have it inside of us. We've all experienced it. We've all gone through the damn thing, haven't we? I'm not denying it. I've had it in my youth. And unfortunately, I'm still bothered by it. I see the racism happening these days, left and right. I see how the segregation happens. You can be friends with. I have black friends. I have Latina friends. I have French Creole friends. And I had family that was connected with them. And I loved them a great deal. And it was hard raising, being raised in a in neighborhoods where maybe there was some acceptance but there was still combat going on even in the streets if you know racism was still there the kids have to feel it the kids are going through it sometimes they have to play together study together be friends with each other trying to get trying to get this diversity going where they accept everybody and they're trying to be the best they can be except you have these other people it doesn't matter what skin color it is they're pissed they're angry they don't want to see their future generation having peace I lived in a neighborhood where I felt like I wasn't wanted I went into elementary school and felt like I wasn't wanted there were very few friends I actually had that made it possible. But at least we weren't trying to say anything derogatory about those who kept perse uh, persecuting us. At least I hope not. But yeah, I had to get into a fight or two. Brought out the ugliness. I had to work in environments Right after school, after I screwed up college. I mean, when you're going through school from K through college, you are surrounded by diversity. You're surrounded by differences. And if it was possible, you looked past the damn differences and looked at them as an individual, not as a, not as a target to go crazy on. And I did that. Somewhere I had a picture of a prom that I went to with a good friend of mine. She was maybe about a couple of years older than I was, but she went to my prom. She was black. I'll just call her by her first name, Helen. In our little clique, Back in John F. Kennedy High School in Granada Hills, in our little racial clique, we didn't care about the racial stuff. We cared about each other, one way or another, and we didn't make it into a into a scene. But this one friend of mine, I asked, and she went with me. But I tell you one thing: going to a prom sucked. 
not because of the company. I enjoyed the company. What I was uncomfortable with is going into a social scene with everybody else. We were expected to go to the prom, or try to anyway. It was his last fling before we got out of senior. Some of the kids like to dance. I wasn't comfortable with the fast dancing. I felt, Bleh. But then I heard music in this particular hotel we were in. It was Benny Goodman. It was bands from the old days of the 40s, and I'm hearing it in the, ultra, in the uh, atriums. If I learned how to do swing dag time, I would have swung. Because I enjoyed my company. And I enjoyed the music. It was just boring as hell going to that damn prom and we left. I'm sorry that I made it a bad time for her. I wasn't comfortable with that kind of a social situation there. It's not because of the company. It was my own interpretations of what the hell was going on, and I wasn't part of this group here. I really wasn't. But here I was. We're going to be graduating. We'll never see these guys again. So I thought. Then I get into different environments of a collegiate area where... Well, I'm going to have to be talking more about this one in the next video because I want to keep these things short as best. But.